Hello guys and welcome to this Volks Wizard video. Now, unlike a lot of car vloggers, we actually get our hands dirty here and do a lot of work on our own cars ourselves. We don't just turn up at a garage and film somebody else doing the work. We like to do it ourselves because it can be very enjoyable. And one of the most enjoyable jobs that I do on a regular basis is retrofitting cruise control to the Mark V Golf. Now, you could have ordered it new from the factory for about £175, but the good news is it's actually a lot cheaper to retrofit it on a DIY basis today. So I thought I'd make a video and show you just exactly how easy it is to do it, and you can maybe be inspired and do it to your own car. But before we start taking this lovely Mark V Golf GTI apart, we'll just have a look at the parts needed to do the job. Now here I've got the original stalk, and I've got the cruise control stalk. So you can see they're a bit different. You've got this extra switch on the top, a couple of buttons on the side here, while the other, the original one is just a bit plain. But they still do the same job when it comes to the uh, indicators and the main beam. And this part I didn't get from Volkswagen. I got it from a company called Myler. It was about £40. And the beauty of these Myler parts is that they're actually original quality. So half the price of a Volkswagen part, but just as good quality. And there are cheaper ones out there, but I can assure you they're a false economy because the stalk action is very, very flimsy. They feel like they've done 200,000 miles. So it's worth paying a little bit extra to get Myler quality, but you don't need to buy a genuine part. Uh, I'll just scan this now so you can see what the part number is. I think MSW0025, and it's the equivalent of the original part number 1K09535135G. So, without any further ado, let's get this Mark V Golf GTI stripped and get this cruise control fitted. Okay guys, here we are inside this 2005 Mark V Golf GTI. Now before you start this job, the first thing you need to do is find out if your car will take cruise control by just adding a stalk, because on some models you will need to change the steering control module, which is located down here. It's basically a box of electronics the size of your phone that everything sort of connects into and it manages the operation of the airbags, the horn, the stalks, and I think some other bits and pieces, probably paddles when you've got a paddle shift gearbox. And to save money, Volkswagen fitted some of those that don't handle cruise control. So if you didn't order cruise, the module won't do cruise. To find out if your car will take it, you have to use Vacom. Now, I know it's another expense, but you can borrow this off somebody or you can find somebody on a forum that will do this for beer money. So whilst it's a couple of hundred quid investment, I'm sure there's somebody else out there who will do it for next to nothing. And what they need to do is to go into the number 16, the steering wheel module, and what you do is basically you code it as if you've already fitted the cruise. So these numbers here, luckily VCDS will tell you what you need to do. But there's a string of numbers and you change the one here that says we've got number one at the moment, which is we've got a trip computer, but we don't have cruise. We're going to change it to number four, which is with trip computer and with cruise. And that is the second from last number. So as you can probably just about see there, it's number one. You can delete that, add a four and then click do it, which then recodes the modules to be waiting now for a cruise control stalk. And it's accepted it. Now, in fact, if you've got a module that won't accept cruise, it will say coding not accepted and make like an error noise, like in um, on a game show where it goes doo doo, that kind of noise. So yeah, if it says accepted, most of the time, not all of the time, it should work. There are some modules that will say yes, and you'll install it, the light will come on, but they won't actually work. There's one, I think it's BD is the code or something like that at the end of the part number, which is a bit of a nightmare, but there's not, you know, there's a VCDS website. I'll put a link in the description. That gives you a list of steering control modules that should work and the ones which we won't. So you can scour eBay and try and get one that will work. But if you've got paddles, it's a bit more complicated to get one that works and does cruise. And yeah, anyway, be wary. But hopefully like this car, it will just work straight away and you'll get coding accepted. Now, while we've got VCDS out, we need to change the coding on the engine control module, the ECU, so that it knows, knows cruise control has been fitted as well, so it can operate and uh, change the speed accordingly. So let's go into engine. Again, coding. Now, because there's a lot more coding on the engine, it's got a long coding helper. So it's a bit more complicated, but down here, all you have to do is tick a box, and that changes the coding. Go exit, and then do it. And there we are again, coding accepted. So now the, the ECU is ready for the instructions from the cruise control. On other cars, there are different ways of doing it. On this, this is how you do it on this 2005 Mark V Golf GTI. Right, now we've done that, we know it's gonna work. Let's get stripping this car down. Okay guys, as is always the case when working on electrical components, you should always disconnect the battery of the car. So we're gonna disconnect the negative lead and it's very easy on a Mark V Golf, pop the bonnet, pop this cover off 
and then with a 10 millimeter spanner you just undo the terminal like so and then just pop that out of the way to make sure it can't just end up making connection again and that's it so if you've got an aftermarket radio it's probably a good idea to make sure you don't have to put a code in or if you've got make sure you've got the code handy but on the original stereo the rcd 500 or 510 it remembers which one's which i think if you put in an rcd navigation rns sorry 510 you may well need a code so just check you've got the code if you're going to disconnect the battery okay guys now we are going to start dismantling and the first thing we need to do is remove the airbag from the steering wheel now i know that might sound a bit frightening because airbags explode and all that but if you've disconnected the battery there should be no problem just take your time take care it's important not to mark anything that's probably the biggest risk with this job but using a screwdriver to pry things off is potentially going to leave marks so if you if you take a lot of care you should be able to avoid that now the first thing we need to do is turn the steering wheel 90 degrees so that we can see where the airbag is attached. It's attached by a couple of springs, spring clips that lock onto a couple of tabs that are part of the steering wheel casting because the, the steering wheel actually is made of some sort of aluminium or some sort of metal with all the plastic attached to it. So you need to release the springs with a flat blade screwdriver. I'll put on the screen now a picture of the, what I mean with the springs and the, and the tab on the back of the steering wheel. But I'd highly recommend before you even start to do this job is to get one of these inspection mirrors because it makes it so much easier because you actually see what you're doing without this it's impossible to see what you're trying to prise off with this and you'll just end up scratching everything so let's see how easy it really is so you should also put the steering wheel on its maximum reach adjustment to give you more room so you don't touch the uh, instrument cluster Okay, so we've pushed the spring down and while we're doing that we're pulling the airbag gently away from the steering wheel and then just at the time when the, sp the spring clears the tab on the, on the back of the steering wheel the airbag will move out a bit so it's probably about half an inch clear of the steering wheel now so all we need to do is turn it around the other way and do the same thing so with the inspection mirror just check everything's good make that as vertical as possible it's really hard with the engine off but We'll get there in the end yep that's good and then pop your screwdriver in being careful not to mark anything and then yeah just lever that down and then keep the pressure in so you're basically levering down but you're pushing it towards you as well and there we go that's the airbag released so because it was already undone on the other side it was trying to get out so i didn't even have to pull any put any pressure on it to, to release it from the steering wheel so let's just straighten the steering wheel now and have a look at what we've got okay so behind here there's a big yellow attachment plug and we just need to slide the clip on the top of it towards us and then that just comes off because there's another clip down here that needs to be released and that's the airbag so put that away somewhere safely so it won't get damaged and right next we need to remove the steering wheel from the steering column okay now we need to remove the steering wheel from the steering column now it's held in place by a big uh, nut right in the middle of it so we just need to undo that using this m12 XZN, it's not Torx, XZN, I think it's called multi-spline, but it's an M12 bit, and that goes in the middle of the uh, steering wheel, and then just undo that, it's quite a tight initially, of course, and there we go. Now, the steering wheel and the steering column have got marks on them that you need to realign as they were when you remove them, that way you won't have your tracking out or anything like that, so just to make a note of these take a photo because sometimes they're actually not lined up perfectly but it's like an indentation on the column and the same thing on the on the metal of the steering wheel and so when you assemble it you'll know they're back together so then it just pulls off put it away so you don't somewhere carefully so you don't damage it and then just beware of the slip ring this is a slip ring it controls the airbag and the other connections i think from the steering wheel because they still need to be connected as you turn the steering wheel around and it can move a bit but just make sure it doesn't go a uh, more than 360 uh, while you're doing the installation because otherwise it will cause ESP problems. 
Okay, now with the steering wheel removed, we can take the steering column cowling off and that will then expose all the electronics in the stalk. To do that, there's a one torque screw underneath it near the handle for adjusting the steering column. So release the handle for adjustment, push that down and that will give you access to the screw, which is a T20 or 25, I think it's a 25. Okay, and that's the screw, so put that somewhere safe. Uh, that's the bottom half released, and now we need to release the top. Now, you can either prise it off or try and do it by hand. If you're gonna prise it off, use a plastic wedge because you'll very easily mark the, the plastic housing. So let's just pull that out a bit and then see if we can do it by hand. There we go, so no marks. Uh, I used to prise that out and then I just found it much easier to do it that way, so that's okay, so that's undone. Now that r reveals two screws here and here that hold the lower cowling on as well, so let's just undo those. You don't need to fully remove the, uh, the upper cowling. I think it can stay in place. If you really wanted to, you could just pull it away from the instrument cluster, but the spring clips that hold it in place are a bit fragile, so best not to undo stuff you don't need to undo. Okay, so that's two screws out of the way. They're the same as the one underneath, so you can mix them up. Yep, definitely the same. Okay, I've got to take the key out. We've left the key in, obviously the ignition's off, so it doesn't matter, but we've left the key in so we can move the steering wheel around. And then you've just got to work a little bit of like a rubber gasket around the ignition switch. And that's that. I think on some of the Audis it's a lot harder. You have to take the handle off the adjustment one, but on Golfs it's really easy. Okay, so that now exposes the electronic switch. So we've got the, what I mentioned earlier, the steering control module. That's here. So that just pushes in there. That pushes underneath into everything and all the stalks and that connects into it. We don't need to, well, we do need to touch that to get the stalk out because obviously that pushes into it. Um, but we don't need to change it, so that's good. Okay, now to get the steering control module off, we need to undo the torque screw. It's only tiny, it's a T8. Again, very easy to lose, so put that somewhere safe. And then, this is the sort of fiddly bit really. You can, you have to use something like long and thin, like this Allen key or a drill bit, and you have to put it in this slot here. Uh, make sure you don't put it in the hole where you've just put the, taken the screw out of. I have done that before. Um, and you push, basically what you're doing is releasing a clip that's set quite far down the steering control module that holds it in place by pushing this through this gap. And then while you do that, you're uh, just release that handle. You're just pulling it downwards. There is a little sticker here that's a warning sticker to stop you fiddling like an anti-tamper thing, but we'll just release that to make it easier. Okay, that's all good. Right then, so just fiddling with this Allen key while we pull it down. And there we go, that's not all the way off. That's not all the way off, but it, it's good enough for our needs. Now the next thing to do is the slip ring. Now, you just do this by hand, so there are a couple of clips on the back. They look really fragile, but I've not broken one yet. But it's, it's much better to do it with your hands because there's a little bit more compliance and then take that off again make sure you don't rotate it a bit of movement left and right isn't a problem because the steering wheel will line up correctly and you just line that up with the steering wheel put that there so that exposes a few other bits and pieces including our stalk which is good but we need to take this fiddly little thing off first that's I think it's a steering angle sensor and now our stalk is exposed. Now if you look here, you can see this is the steering control module. By pulling it down, we we're able to get the stalk out because before it was tucked into the module. Pulling it down means it's clear of the module and now we just need to slide it off. Now, again, you can do this by hand. There's a little tab on the back. Actually, that's quite stiff, so we'll just use our flat blade screwdriver. Apart from this tab on the left-hand side towards the rear of the stalk, 
there is another clip but generally they just uh, they just seem to release just if you put a bit of effort into it there we go so the stalk is released now just time to uh, go and get the other one i'm really excited now because at this point it's just you've done the hard work and it just all pushes back together basically okay so here's our new mylar stalk so we just slot this in it's so much easier putting stuff together like they do in the factory than taking it all apart because it's designed to be assembled easily in a factory. So this should just clip in nicely. Should be a nice positive click. Yep. And so that's in place. And then we need to put the steering angle sensor back, which just clips in underneath the column. Like so. And that leaves the slip ring which it's got those two tabs there, one there and one there. And that goes in place. Like that, lovely. Okay, and then we just need to push the steering control module back into place to connect everything together. It. so you should hear it all click back to place because yeah there we go you know it's done then and then find that fiddly little torque screw the t8 one pop that into the hole that's in and then that's good that's good all right next is the lower cowling so slot that around the handle and then feed it the little rubber gasket around the ignition switch. Make sure that sits properly. It's really important to get this right because this is probably easy to not get right and you might have the steering column not sitting, the steering column cowling not sitting correctly, which is a bit of a shame because with a bit of care you can make everything look just like it did before. And then put these two torque screws back in. So that's one there. One on the left. And just check it again. Yeah, all good. Okay, to install the lower one, because you need to line it up, I'm just gonna get out of the car and, and kneel down and have a good look up to make sure it's in place. Okay, that's fiddly, but you probably need a torch just so you can see the thread in the in the steering column where that's got to go. Right, so now this is a bit you can get wrong, so just take your time to do this. Pull the column out, lock it down, and just make sure you are you've got the upper cowling properly mounted into the the lower bit because there's a couple of little clips down the side of it, and then it should just push together. Remember, we forced it up while well, we're kind of reversing that now by clipping it back into place. So that's one clip. That's the other clip. So yeah, just check it's lined up. Perfect. Right, what's next? So that's all good. Looks like it's got to be steering wheel. So let's grab the steering wheel. And I'm just going to check the alignment marks because as I say, sometimes they aren't perfect. Hmm, actually that does look quite good, so let's just see, use a bit of light. Yep, I pretty much say that's bang on, but don't assume they're lined up, the two marks, because I've seen them before where they're not. Okay, then we're going to take the big nut, put it back in the middle of the steering wheel. Now you do have to do this quite tight, and you can do it against the steering lock, but it's probably 
good idea if you've got a helper to have them hold the steering wheel while you tighten this up against them rather than do it against the steering wheel. I'm going to use, use my knees to hold the steering wheel while I tighten it. So it doesn't have to be ridiculously tight, but it does need to be tight. Okay, right then, so next. It's always a good idea before you touch the airbag to touch a part of the body of the car to make sure you've got no static. So I just touch somewhere in the door frame, maybe a screw on the door because it's not painted. Okay, let's grab this. So make sure it's the right way up. Remember what we undid. So on this car, there's a lower clip and then the upper big, the upper plug, the yellow one, just push it into place of so the clip. The white clip will lock itself into place as you push it on. You'll hear it click. There you go. And then now we're just trying to get the springs attached. Make sure everything's not, everything's in place and not snagged. Yep. Yep. All good. And then we just need to offer it up to the steering wheel. And then the spring tabs that were so fiddly earlier, they just lock themselves into place. So that's one. That's the other. So just check the horn works. I mean, the, the action of the horn, because obviously we've got no power right now. And that, believe it or not, is the installation of the cruise control on a Mark V Golf GTI. Now, obviously we need to reconnect the battery, but let's do that and then we'll go for a test drive. Okay, the battery's reconnected. I've just started the ignition and I've just set the clock using the H and M buttons to the left of the instrument cluster. And let's start the car. All good. So let's just check the horn works. That's fine. And there are a few lights on the dashboard, but don't worry about those because they'll come off when we start driving. Now, on this early model, when you operate the on button on the stalk, you get the green cruise control light on the instrument cluster. On some later cars, they've messed around with the software and you only get the green light when the cruise control is actually active, when it's controlling the speed. So don't worry if you've got a later car like an 07 or 08 and the light does nothing because it will only do it when you're working and you have to go over like 20 miles an hour or so before it will work. So we know the, but we know the button's working now. Will it actually hold the speed? Well, let's, let's go and find out. So we've just hit about 15 miles an hour and all the lights have gone off apart from the cruise one and that still goes on and off okay but it will, we need to press the set button on the stalk for it to hold the speed and we need to be going a bit faster than 20 miles an hour so let's just get onto this main road it's it's about quarter to six now so it's quite busy let's see how we get on Okay, so we're up to 20, let's just get to the speed limit, so we're just hitting a 40 now. So I'm going to press set, which is on the bottom of the stalk. Here we go. I do have bad memories of times when that hasn't worked, but today my feet are flat on this floor mat, you can hear. And we're maintaining a steady 40 miles an hour. So, I hope you've enjoyed this box with a DIY video. If you have, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and I'll see you for the next one soon. Cheers!